So we wait a couple of more minutes, uh, sorry, seconds, and, and then we start. Okay, the numbers are going up. Okay, let's, let's start. Uh, hi everyone and uh, welcome. It's my uh, pleasure to welcome you all uh, to the Internet Society Open Board Forum. This is our fifth Open Board Forum. As you know, we started with this exercise back in 2016. And uh, my name is uh, Desire Milosevic. I'm one of the board um, trustees and I'll be a moderator for this session. And I will do that uh, together with James Wood, the Chief Communications Officer of the Internet Society. So I'll pass you on to James, who can give you some um, housekeeping roles. Thank you very much, Desiree. Um, and welcome, everybody. Thank you very much for joining this uh, uh, Open Board Forum call. Um, as Desiree has said, uh, we are recording this call now, uh, and that recording will be made available to you all after, after this call. Um, you will also have seen uh, alternating slides uh, just before we got started with uh, some housekeeping rules um, on them. And I'd just like to remind everybody uh, about these. Um, first and foremost, uh, please remember to mute if you are not speaking. That just helps the call to run smoothly and, and avoids uh, static and interference and background noise interrupting the conversation. Um, the format of the call will uh, be based around a short presentation given by Desiree and other trustees, followed by three open questions to community members. Uh, if at any point you wish to speak, uh, or to either ask a question or to respond to something uh, in the call, please uh, type the word hand into the Zoom chat box. Uh, you will find the chat button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Um, and then uh, either myself or Desiree will be able to place you into the queue to ask that question. Uh, if you wish to type a question or respond to the board uh, in the chat itself, please do so. Uh, if you could include your name uh, and your country, the country that you're from, that would be very helpful. And feel free also to write anything in either French or Spanish. We do have uh, a translation uh, uh, a person who's able to translate um, on hand uh, who can translate your questions and re responses back into English for, for discussion. Uh, so uh, if that is clear, um, I will hand back to Desiree for us to get started with the agenda. Desiree. Uh, thank you, James, and um, welcome everyone. Good afternoon, evening, or, or um, morning, wherever you are uh, on this session. Uh, we'd like to start with a very quick introduction of the rest of the Board of Trustees. Um, I already introduced myself, so why don't we um, go with Olga? Hello, uh, my name is Olga Cavalli. I am from Argentina and I am a member of the Board of Trustees elected by chapters. And I'm very glad to see more than 111 participants. This is remarkable. And I want to thank Desiree for organizing the the open forum and also the support from our staff that has been great. Thank you very much. I, I'll go by the hands, Peter. I believe you're next on my slide and then Glenn. Yeah, hello. Uh, I'm Hans-Peter Dittler from Germany, also on the Board of Trustees. I'm finishing my fourth year next week with AGM and will be on board for another two years, so. Thank you, Peter. Glenn? Hi, um, it's morning for, for me in, in Canada. Uh, I just finished my first year, so I'm st still a newbie, but uh, happy to be here. I, I um, have a bit of history uh, as the founder of the ISOC Canada chapter, so I come from the chapter community. Thank you. I see Sean next. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sean Tumor. I'm appointed by the IATF, um, and I guess I've been on the board for the same amount of time as Hans Peter, four years, and I have two years left. Thanks. 
Hey, Gonzalo, I see you next. Hello, Gonzalo, originally from Spain, living in Finland, and I've served three years in the board already. Well, thank you, John. Uh, thank you. I'm, I'm John Levine. I'm from the U.S. I live in New York. I've been on the board for three years and have three more to go. I see Walid. Yes, it's Walid al sakaf originally from Yemen, uh, living in Sweden. I've been elected by the chapters and uh, I have another three years. And so I'd like to thank chapters for their trust and looking forward to a, a fruitful discussion. Uh, Hiroshi, if you're there, speak up. Mm. Can't hear you, I uh, can't see you. Um, how about, um, Yes, I, I just would ask who can the, uh, already have a question uh, in the chat room. Um, could uh, the board of trustees also say uh, what they do outside the board? Um, so I think that's a question. Uh, looking for more trustees online, uh, not hearing um, anyone else. I believe uh, they, the, the rest of them may join us as, uh, and I, I can see Kathy is online. She's a trustee and CEO and the president. Hello, good to see you. Uh, thanks, Kathy. Uh, so uh, before we go into the survey um, uh, results, I, I recommend that uh, if any time you want to raise your hand and just interrupt and um, introduce yourself um, again, uh, we'd like to really uh, have a very brief update of what the Board of Trustees have been doing in the last um, 12 months. And uh, so we have highlighted some of the activities, not all of them, uh, just to give you a brief update. And I would uh, pass the mic um, to the uh, chairman of the board, uh, Gonzalo uh, Camarillo. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Um Okay, I, I lost the agenda now, but um, I assume you want me to give a, a quick update on the CEO search process, right? Yes, please. I think Excellent. that was the first thing on the... Perfect. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Excellent. So, yeah, to, to tell the community very briefly that we are, I mean, we have been sending out um, um, emails every now and then so that, you know, to keep everyone um, updated. At this point, we are very much advanced into the process and we have been having several stages where we have been screening candidates. And uh, as I said, you know, we are very much advanced and our plan is to, to announce the new CEO either at the AGM next week, that's quite aggressive, or shortly thereafter. So in that sense, you know, we are just, you know, taking care of the last um, kind of, you know, selection. And hopefully, you know, we'll have good news for all of you very soon. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Um, um, Gonzalo, I, yes, yes. I think the second item on the agenda is an update um, about um, uh, something that the board has adopted. Um, recently and it's about the roles and responsibilities document from PIR so I would kindly ask Hans-Peter Dittler to say a few words about that. Yes, uh, hello uh, again me and uh, talking a little bit about PIR because PIR is uh, one very central part of the ISOC universe. Uh, it's a company which was founded more than 15 years ago uh, and running the .org domain, and it's one of our main uh, sources of uh, income for the Internet Society. So after having running this company for 15 years, we decided uh, together with staff to, let's say, formulate some of the operational procedures onto paper, which were more or less only on the minds of people and uh, just seeing Craig Kapfer in one of the pictures on my screen here, uh, he retired in uh, the end of, or in the summer end of 2016. And uh, this was also a point where we thought we need to write down some of the things which were only uh, in the minds of people before we lose all this knowledge. So this paper 
which is called uh, operational uh, principles or ISOC PIR operating procedures was created just detailing uh, how we work together. And uh, in the end, we didn't change anything in the bylaws. We didn't change any real uh, central thing. It's just a paper uh, giving some detailed information how we work together and how we continue. And uh, just to give you an impression, uh, PIR is continuing uh, being a very good contributor. Uh, we hope everything goes as it has been so far. And uh, we are looking forward having uh, the stream of income from PIR uh, as we are used for the last 16 years or 17 years now. So it's a very positive uh, lookout for the future. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Hans-Peter. Um, uh, the last uh, item on our up agenda update from the board is um, uh, about IASA 2.0 or the ITF administrative uh, uh, changes. Uh, so I would kind of ask either Sean or John or Richard if he's on the call to, to say a few words about that. Thank you. Mm, Sean, you have a floor if you wish to speak about that. <laughs> Okay, so this is an IETF-led effort, and I guess I want to stress that it's an IETF-led effort and not an ISOC-led effort. Um, and they're basically looking at how um, ISOC supports the IETF, because the, at this point, there's actually only one um, staff person at, um, of the IETF, and that's the uh, IETF Administrative Director, and they are an employee of ISOC. So they're basically looking at how to figure out how to be um, associated with, with ISOC, Currently, they're an ISOC activity, and they're looking at becoming a what's called a, a disregarded entity or an LLC, a limited liability corporation based in the United States. And uh, things are progressing relatively smoothly, I guess. They're trying to figure out how they're going to pick the board and arrangements and um, how everything's going to be all connected. And, uh, you know, there, there's been boffs, and there's a working group now that's been formed to uh, look at this and do a study. And uh, we're hoping that this is all going to come to conclusion here in the next six months or so, maybe quicker. Thank you for that succinct uh, report. Um, any other comments? Uh, if I hear none. Uh, therefore, we can go back to our agenda and, uh, and actually um, go to our uh, discussion uh, why we're all here. Uh, so a really good segue would be to uh, thank everyone who has filled in our survey um, for this open board session and just to give you a few updates uh, for those people who were not able to uh, to see it um, when it was posted um, a couple of days ago on the um, on the website so you may have uh, not able to um, find it uh, I would ask Dan or Kevin to put the um, the slides up um, please Okay, so we can start, I hope you can all see it. Um, the um, Open Board Forum survey has run for three weeks and uh, we had a very good response um, from the community. It has been sent out to individual members, chapters, organizational members, and a wider ISO community on many um, mailing lists. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so one of the questions we have asked was really um, if you wish to stay anonymous, how were you connected to ISOC? And you will see from the responses that we had, we had about uh, 614 responses um, um, who have uh, completed the survey, uh, which is actually about 1.5% of uh, registered members of the Internet Society. But if you look at the split, the chapter members, we have 346 uh, responses, uh, which is more than we have chapters. So it means we have active individual members and chapters. And significantly from the um, special interest groups, uh, there were 53 people who responded to survey. And if you look at the organizational members that we have, about, um, where there are about 150 or more organizational members of the Internet Society, some 43. Uh, responded for this, um, to the survey, uh, one third, and we also had some notable guests, um, uh, 31 
You can see uh, we also have board members uh, replying to the survey, ISOC staff, uh, the leaders of the Youth IGF Fellow, uh, former trustees, um, guests who are outside of our community, as well as uh, some IGF uh, uh, MAG members. Uh, next slide. Uh, what we also ask you, I think this was a continuation of the efforts that HA staff has undertaken some long time ago to look at the topics uh, for the digital future. So um, these questions were, um, or the topics were quite long and you couldn't have picked all of them. Um, but um, what has come up to the top, maybe not surprising, is that we have access and the trust on the internet as um, the most interested topics uh, that you wish to talk about, as well as internet governance coming in. Um, third, um, human rights also ranked um, um, somehow um, in, in quite a lot of comments, although we couldn't um, uh, summarize all the results um, but you can see maybe what's not as surprising is that some of the technical work um, DNS and some of the um, internet exchange points has not risen up as as highly maybe because there are already projects um, ongoing projects and, uh, and and maybe there might be uh, something different um, some of the notable others uh, said that education was something that ISOC um, should definitely uh, pay attention to when thinking of their strategy going forward, as well as um, consolidation. I think this is a network consolidation uh, issue that uh, came up uh, as well. Uh, next slide, please. And we did ask the uh, subject of interest that you wish to discuss with us. As I've mentioned before in the previous four open board forum sessions, um, we did not have a huge interest, but this survey shows that you really, as a community and community leaders, um, talk to us about many topics. And these are some of the um, topics that came up um, and showed most loudly, such as the access, security, community, privacy, and um, um, Africa and rural work, and so on. You can see um, the slides are available on, on the website. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so we also ask uh, whether this uh, sort, uh, this kind of a channel with the community uh, is, is useful and your response to that was that 84% uh, said it's very useful, 1% said it was not useful and we would like to know why uh, you think that, while well, some 13% uh, were not um, uh, certain if it were or not. Um, so um, there's also other that were not willing to, uh, not uh, giving any comments, probably not familiar with this channel of communication. Uh, so some of the quotes that we have taken out uh, say that we should limit the number of ISOC members per meeting and that, um, that most people below the poverty level don't even understand what a forum is, uh, let alone participate, and that uh, you would like it to be multilingual and that you would prefer a face-to-face -face, uh, meeting in form of a seminar. Um, also, some of you might have some other suggestions and, uh, and uh, somebody was encouraging saying that someone should take leadership for the public and it's a good way to engage. So after this forum, I think we will reassess as well. Uh, next slide, please. Um, as to uh, how you wish um, to engage uh, with us and how the board engages with the community. Obviously, the board um, is not involved in any Pro, um, any um, programmatic um, um, feedback, but more in a, we're interested in a more of a strategic vision, you know, some blind spot that we might have and uh, some of the collaborative works that you may wish to bring to our attention in addition to what you have in mind. Uh, so uh, in terms of what we're trying to do today is also take out um, some of our time and uh, place it in a week working agenda and I'm glad there's so many of us online um, rather than put it in a busy uh, agenda, a board agenda where everyone is pressed for time. 
Uh, so your response, next slide please, was in terms of preference, uh, when would you like to have an open uh, uh, board forum is that majority of you said that Saturday would work best, which is when we usually have our board of trustees meeting and then the next um, uh, best spot for you was um, Friday followed by Sunday. So it's interesting, we're trying to do this in the middle of the week now uh, to see if the attendance is bigger and it certainly is. Um, but we also take in uh, what you said in your survey. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, in terms, uh, we also try to get, although we are all over the world, um, uh, we'll try to see if there is any better time to hold these meetings that would work for everyone. And for some reason, uh, this timing uh, fit between 15 and 1800 UTC uh, showed up as the most favorable and that's, that's why we have scheduled this opportunity for you to uh, raise issues and give feedback in this time frame. Uh, next slide, please. Um, to summarize, um, we believe um, from uh, what we have heard back that there is an overwhelming interest and that you would uh, like to uh, engage with us in a form uh, or shape of a forum. I believe most of you who participate in other ISOC open forums uh, led by staff are very familiar with that way of working. And uh, so you would find this uh, also an agreeable way of, um, of holding this uh, forum. Um, so um, just lastly to finish this off um, is that um, uh, to repeat that some of the five most interesting issues that you have singled out in this particular survey uh, was access and trust and security and uh, human rights and internet governance. Uh, so, um, however, we would like to know why the five least interesting issues to the community were manners, uh, DNSSEC, TLS, BGP and IXP, um, which is the technical work and some of our um, campaign work is working very hard on, on these issues, so it would be good to get some feedback. Um, we also like to receive further feedback on the email address that we have set up, openboardforum at isoc.org, in, in terms of the um, other things you'd like to say. So with that, I think that's the last slide. Um, we go straight into the questions. Um, and uh, we'll start again with um, one we had in the survey for those of you who had no chance or opportunity to answer. Um, is uh, what strategic vision or feedback you'd like to bring to board's attention because the challenges facing the internet are enormous and our um, resources aren't endless. So I open it up for the floor. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, let's go back to the questions that we had um, during the uh, presentation. We had one um, question, um, and I wonder if the person would like to speak up, or um, uh, we can, I believe it's Drashti, um, you were asking a question during the slides. Mm, yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm from India, and I think there are many chapters and which are already listed on website, but those are not seems active. Like uh, website is also not well established to connect with the chapter lead. So I was just thinking that after confirming from the chapter lead, can we put that in archive? So uh, it won't be create a bad impact. Like we have so many chapters, but like if any person think that half of the chapter is not active, then what to do? Yeah, that's enough. Thank you for your feedback, Drashti. Um, yeah. Have you addressed this with the community? Sorry? I said I believe you have already uh, spoke to your community and your um, fellow members of the chapter about what to do about this. No, no, I haven't done that till now. I see. I should Thank you. 
Okay, um, thank you for your feedback again. Um, let's see who else is in the queue. Desiree, we have uh, Yari in the queue right now. Thanks, James. Go ahead. Hi guys, can you hear me? Testing? Thank you. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, yeah. thank you for organizing this. And I had a question about the recent announcement from ISO. Can I think at the same time a topic that falls under the category of challenges in, in the internet that you were asking about? And my question relates to the partnership between ISO and Consumers International, which was basically about focusing on ensuring that consumers get good security, can have faith in their data being used properly and so on in the area of uh, Internet of Things. And this is this is obviously good. It's great, in fact. Um, and some of the issues are really pressing. But obviously, the question of knowing and being able to control uh, how your personal data is used is a broader issue in the Internet. And uh, you and you you've seen news about how data from social networks is being misused, for instance. And uh, I guess my question is if uh, the idea is to include the broader context in this effort or perhaps it's addressed by other Isaac programs. And, and I, I obviously also think that this is an important topic, at least from my perspective, and uh, worth uh, some focus and time from Isaac. It goes to the heart of ensuring that the users get the benefits that they need and deserve on the internet. So that's what I had. Um, thank you for your question. I wonder if any of the board members wish to make any comment. Okay, so there's um, no immediate uh, response. Um, I think one of the way to follow up uh, with all the questions that we get today is to do a, a written follow up so that your questions emailed to us could also be uh, answered um, at once and to give you some time frame as well. Um, I, would, I, would, I would think that probably uh, um, three to four weeks um, might be the bearing in mind that the trustees are meeting next uh, weekend uh, or in a couple of weeks in, in for the AGM um, uh, would be an appropriate time frame to send some of the responses back. Um, thank you. Um, James, is there anyone else in the uh, I don't see any others in the queue right now. We've had a couple of questions about the uh, the slides that are uh, on the event page, the Open Forum event page uh, in chat, but no other questions coming right now. Ah, Olga, I see, has a hand. Just a second. And Caroline is in the queue. Thank you, James. Um, can you hear me well? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I would like to respond to the lady that spoke from India about the chapters uh, not being active. Uh, I think it's extremely challenging sometimes. You know, the chapters are around by volunteers. So uh, what we are experiencing in Latin America is a very good work done by staff in trying to uh, gather chapters together, follow up what they are doing and trying to help them in, in moving forward. It's always challenging, as I said, because it's volunteer work, but I, I suggest that, that you get in touch with the, the person of the staff in, in, I think that you can get the, the name here in, in the chat from our colleagues from ICANN staff and, and see uh, the feedback they can give you about that. But um, I, I, I have seen a, a really a, a, very, a very good result of the reinforcing and rejuvenation of many chapters and reorganizing them and, and following up with their, with their work, for, from, especially from staff. So I would suggest that you do that. Uh, thank you, Olga. I can see that we have an, uh, um, uh, we have Caroline in, in the queue. So let's go to Caroline and then to Harish Pillay, who joined the call, also a trustee. Yes. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. So I'm in uh, Toronto, Canada, but I'm a, I'm a dual French and Canadian citizen. And um, I'm uh, quite uh, happy to see you all here. It's interesting. I've been following the Internet Society for 15 years just through emails. It's the first time I've joined a meeting like this. Uh, so I'm just a concerned digital citizen, um, you know, someone who's um, concerned with what's going on with the Internet, who's worked with um, digital media 
as a, um, from a, a business point of view, from a digital marketing point of view, and um, who's embarked on doing some of what I see, uh, I think Olga, uh, looking at her bio, has done, which is to try and educate both small business owners and also, I think, individuals and um, on how to really leverage the internet uh, positively in their everyday lives. And um, so I guess I'm just curious what, what, um, how I can contribute. It seems quite complex to, um, for us to, to try and leverage our common uh, resources here. Um, what I see as a, as a challenge, uh, listening, looking at your reports and listening to the various comments is, how do we make the link with the private sector and um, who is going at a pace, uh, the Facebooks and the Googles are going at a pace that is unprecedented. And so I guess my question is how do we, and yeah, to respond to the previous person's question, you know, does privacy include social media concerns? Is how, how can we do anything to impact um, and maybe you can tell me about any efforts that the Internet Society is doing. Um, is it with political leaders or, or to, to impact what, you know, how, <laughs> how the Internet is shaped, uh, notably from the private sector side? Yeah. Thank you, Caroline. Um, I, I believe uh, that um, I, I would ask first uh, one of my colleagues if they want to make any comments to this, um, to your question. Um, this is Harish. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll follow up uh, what Caroline had just said. Um, I think the, um, so, um, sorry, uh, I'm Harish Pillay. I'm one of the uh, uh, trustees uh, and I'm based out of Singapore. Um, so I think the the key thing that we need to also uh, keep in mind based on what uh, uh, Caroline has just mentioned, um, what is it that ISOC can do? Uh, I think part of what we are already doing is education. And I think we need the chapters and, you know, all of us to collectively educate our own individual constituencies that we are part of, the communities that we are part of, about the need for privacy, security, and you know, the ability to control the data that you have, uh, especially from a social media perspective. I think a lot of the problems that we face and we see today largely stems from complete lack of understanding and what are the exposures that one has uh, when you're dealing with uh, technologies that uh, looks very interesting, it's a lot of fun, and you, know, you inadvertently uh, put out stuff that you may not even realize that you're doing. So a lot of it has got to do with education, teaching people what it is and explaining to people what it is. So I think that's the space that we should uh, collectively be moving forward. And really the grassroots level is where we need to uh, help people to go in that direction. So the chapters become the hands and feet on the ground to make sure that we get education done. So through seminars, through webinars, through, through Zoom sessions, through whatever means possible to make sure that this is uh, actually uh, doable so that that will be my my reply to that thank you right thank you yeah that's i agree uh, i think if i can add something sorry um sure. <laughs> i think the challenge is how do we educate efficiently because uh, coming from you know a digital marketing point of view what i see is the strength of um you know the private sector in using the most the latest and the most and the fanciest and the most attractive ways to educate through for example you know short videos um you know using personalities to send the message across and um the challenge i see is how does a nonprofit um uh, deal with that um because from my experience trying to talk to trying to educate you know fellow parents, adults, about what is going on on the internet, both from the personal point of view and from their children's point of view, is that they have no time, they have no awareness of the need to be educated. And so um, my question is, how do we reach them when they're not necessarily ready to be educated about the internet, but how do we sort of attract them to um, uh, entertaining content that will also educate them at the same time. I think, you know, that's one of the questions I've been asking myself and I'd love to ask all of you or 
not if not now later <laughs> but that's one of the topics that i'm um uh, struggling with and um wanting to do something about yeah thank you caroline i think john is in line second uh, yeah can I, if i can just jump in for a minute um for people who are mostly familiar with the chapters um isoc actually has three constituencies i mean there's the there's the itf there's the chapters and we also have organizational members um, and the organizational members include most of the large um, internet related companies you've heard of um, they, they 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 appoint board members and in fact we have a one of our, our we have a new incoming board member uh, later this month who works for who's a policy guy who works for Facebook you know and to some extent I suppose like oh my gracious we're captured by Facebook but no we're not I mean we have um, we you know we we talk to these big companies all the time you know and there's a certain tension between what they <clears throat> their 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 their, their profit or, oriented goals and our public service goals. You know, but I mean, you're absolutely right that, you know, there's also these are big issues of, of privacy and personal data and persuading our children that, that no, really, you don't want to give away every every scrap of your personal information just to get a keychain. Um, but it's it's stuff our, our staff spends a lot of time looking at. And I think if, if you look around on our website, um, you'll see we have, we have public policy papers where we look at that a lot, you know, and, and, and we, are, we are deeply engaged with these issues because we think they're just as important as you do. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, thank you, John. Uh, thank you, Caroline. Um, I believe there's a really uh, interesting discussion going on in the chat room, but it's not really um, asking any uh, um, and any questions or so. If I could, yeah, there's a ha hand up. I can see Dibingi Kalenda. Uh, would you like to speak up and? We had, uh, Desiree, there's a few people in the queue right now. We had Olga, okay. Dave, Bungi, and Barak were in the queue. Thank you, James. That's me? Uh, okay. Um, I would like to, to speak about the short, small and medium enterprises that you mentioned. I think this is a very, very important issue, especially for our region, Latin America and the Caribbean Latin America bases its, its economy mainly on small and medium enterprises. Not all small, small and medium enterprises get easily in, 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 into technology. So what we have been doing concretely with the help of ISOC and also John already mentioned all the papers and information that we have uh, from, from, the, from ISOC, we have organized several online webinars and now we started to partner with universities to provide online training courses or face-to-face -face training courses. So what we do is we gather the community through the chapter and we offer fellowships or half price fellowship for some members in, in the small and medium enterprises. Believe me, there are some small and medium enterprises that don't have a website. They only have uh, uh, one uh, web-based uh, email address. They cannot profit from technology. So also we organized um, a website with all that information, tools for productivity. So it, it's not a short answer. It's a long way to achieve something, but the networking among them and networking with the local community is fundamental. Uh, thank you, Olga. Uh, James, back to you. Uh, yes, added, people adding themselves to the queue all the time. Um, I believe it's now Dave, followed by Dibungi, Barak, Jolly, and I hope I haven't missed anyone. And John Kay at the end. And John Kay, John Kay and Jolly, yes. Uh, hi, Dave Burstein. I said I limit myself to seven minutes. That's an awful lot of time for one person to take here, but the problem is that two thirds of the internet is not being spoken for here. As almost all of us know, there's been a huge spread, at least since 2012, between the US and allies, what I call the DC consensus, and the rest of the world. Two thirds of the world's nations voted at Wicket to change the system, and the US, supported by Europe and ISOC, chose to leave the meeting and not sign the treaty. Fine, the most important question then becomes, how do we bridge that gap? ISOC wants to be global, 
But it's a joke to say we are global, as we often have on our homepage, when more than half of the internet is not included in ISOC, is not here on the board, and has essentially no choice. Remember, China is already one third of the internet, possibly more. There are 400 million broadband connections in China. How do we get them involved? Or do we say we are the internet society of one half of the world? Second, something very odd is going on here because somebody of one of the board members asked, is this new that we said the chapters should have some control over 3% of the money without going through staff? That was part of the original proposal two years ago. That was at the heart of the chapters committee proposal. And the reason we do that is because staff is very political, has its own objectives, and has said no again and again to the things that the chapters want to do. So we are not a multi-stakeholder organization in any meaningful sense if we do not involve the chapters directly and the members in decision making, including what they should do in their own chapter. Thank you, Dave. I think I have to stop you here because you had I, your two minutes. Uh, and, uh, I had my seven minutes? Uh, what are we doing on this call right now? Excuse me, did I have my seven minutes? I, I don't think you can have seven minutes. I talked this over with James before I went on there. Give me one minute more then, please. It is seconds. Thank you. Okay. It is ridiculous to talk about access, which is our most important priority, and only talk about access for the 2% who might be reached by community networks. That's a terrible bad compromise. In the US in particular, the cost of the internet is getting ridiculous. $70 is the cheapest plan at Verizon. We should be doing something about that. It is ridiculous to talk about security if we don't deal with the fact that some governments, including mine, are the biggest threat to security on the internet. We all know that uh, ever since Snowden came out. And we haven't heard on the information, oh, I've been blanked. Thank you. I, I think you wanted to finish that sentence and... Um. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. And thank you, Dave. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. I'm, really, I'm raising points that we all know are relevant. I didn't hear how we were going to find out who funds the Internet Society, something I've asked many times, including... Um, Dave, Dave, this is Gonzalo. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, today we don't have time to, to tackle all the, all the questions, but, you know, send me an email and we will follow up. In any case, quick answers to some of your points. The point that, you know, not every single country in the world is represented in the board. I mean, that obviously is impossible. We have, you know, elections and selection processes. And, and I think we are, you know, representing many areas. Um, if we don't like that, we could, you know, look at it and change the value laws eventually if we agree to do that. Uh, but, you know, pretending that 12 people represent everyone, I mean, you would, have, you would need to have a huge board and that's not practical, right? Um, then second, I mean, regarding the, the, the request from the chapters, yeah, I said it was new. I mean, the, the question was, I obviously, as I wrote in the chat, I obviously remember the request. And I remember the discussion I had with you and we exchanged several offline messages that were quite um, useful for me to understand where you are coming from. Um, so it's, it's not that basically we are not answering that. It's that we provided you an answer which you don't like. So in that sense, the multi-stakeholder model doesn't mean that, you know... You no, actually, Gonzalo, you didn't provide me an answer. The only serious discussion was in a closed board meeting. I respect you. I know you mean well. I'm not making this personal, but we, yeah. and I've just been cut off. Uh, by who? I don't know, but I'm back on, so thank you. Gonzalo, this is not personal. These are, no, I, I fully understand that. Okay, these are issues that I saw tries not to hear. It is very frightening because a third of the staff know that if ISOC were representative of the internet users of the world, not in particular of one country, even if it's a third of the internet, they would be out on their rear ends 
because they are so deeply committed to the U.S. position in WICKET, the ITU, and Internet governance. We have to change that. Thank you, Dave. Uh, we, we did hear all the um, comments you, you have had, and we can continue um, through email, and, and I hope that some of the answers Gonzalo provided were satisfactory, but we can go on providing questions just to you. Um, I, I do apologize. We have to go on with the rest of the uh, questions and the queue. Thank you. Um, so just progressing through the queue, Desiree, we now have uh, Dibongi who had a, a previous question. Yes, go ahead, Dibongi. Can you please unmute yourself? If not, we can keep advancing through the queue. Okay, so next in line was Barak. Hi, James. Hello, please go ahead. Yes, yeah, so a few comments on uh, some of the issues that have been raised before. Uh, one on the issue of educating our communities. I think we must proceed with uh, educating our communities. It's hard to measure the impact, but from my experience in the last 10 years or so, uh, it has been working bit by bit. So I think we should look at how to build the capacity of our chapters to educate, because this is how we bring more users. We bring on board new internet users. And I want to cite an example of uh, what used to happen in 2009 during the IGFs and 2010, where there were a lot of protests in China and flashback to the current time, you can see that China is a very active participant in the multi-stakeholder process. So uh, education is key and we have to continue by all means. The other issue is, again, we must keep talking about good use of the internet in, commons man, in, a, in common man's language. Uh, and basically that's good manners. Of course, the internet has its positive sides, but we've seen a lot of cases where it has also been used negatively. But let's uh, focus on what is positive so that we can also encourage more users to come online. And finally, uh, on the issue of chapters, uh, we've come a long way and I would like to say that we need to continue exploring ways and means of improving corporate governance in our chapters so that we can be able to enhance its effectiveness. Uh, in my opinion, it's a bit too early to give autonomy to chapters uh, because it has its own challenges. Uh, but um, uh, let's continue this conversation in the community until we find a proper way in which chapters can also account for the resources that they receive uh, from the global pool. So that's my take. Thank you very much. Thank you, Barak. I believe um, uh, one of the trustees would want to give a very brief uh, reply to what you have just said. Uh, yes, it's Walid uh, Barak. Thank you very much. Um, and thanks to all the chapters that are showing the real uh, face of ISOC in terms of extending its role to be uh, influential in access and internet governance and human rights and all sorts of things. Um, as the board, we are responsible for setting the overall vision and strategy of ISOC. We oversee the operations of the staff. And one very crucial thing that we pointed to was the need to give the staff and give the uh, bureaus all resources necessary to ensure that there is enough coordination with the local communities. And as you can imagine, that is very difficult for, you know, 100 plus uh, chapters, but yet uh, we are moving in that direction. We have been uh, empowering the staff. We tried to uh, ensure that any uh, missing or let's say vacant position is filled quickly so that we have enough manpower. That being said, it all is a matter of uh, initiative. So these, uh, the end uh, users uh, represented by the volunteers at the chapters are in fact uh, the central uh, actor in this case. So their initiative towards the uh, achieving the goals of ISOC overall will be very much supported by the bureaus. And that's a word from, from the staff and from the board and to ensure that this direction continues. So that's basically what I thought 
I think we're good. I think we're good. Thank you, well uh, James, do we have anybody else in the queue? Yes, we still have people we need to get to in the queue. John Clenson, I believe you were up next, followed by Jolly, Bienvenue, and Drashti had a question in the chat. Thank you. Uh, John, John was saying that he doesn't have voice today, so let me read the, the question for him. Um, I am interested in what ISOC is doing or intends to do about looking at actual use of the internet from a wide range of languages and writing systems and how that interacts with expanding the reach and human interconnectivity of the internet. Those two sets of objectives actually involve trade-offs with, in some cases, more localization implying more isolated islands. While there is a lot of focus out there on domain names and character coding issues, those are probably not the key issues and sometimes feels like cover for avoiding those issues. Is ISOC planning on taking a more active role in this area and if not, why not? That was John's question. Thank you, John. I wonder if anyone wants to make um, a brief uh, comment or we um, continue with the rest of the questions. Yeah, well, I will. I mean, I know John pretty well, and we've, we've, we've been talking about this, and he's absolutely right that languages on the internet are a big topic. It's not one that ISOC has addressed very directly, but it's certainly one that I personally think we should look at, you know, and, it's, and as, we're, as we're building our, our, our plans for, um, for um, <laughs> the next year, you know, and, and, and tra transition, you know, transitioning to our new CEO and coming up with new policies, it is absolutely something that I want to look at and put some emphasis on. Yeah. Thank you, John. Um, James? So we, had, we had Jolly next, followed by Bienvenue. Go ahead, Jolly. Hi. Um, I want to compliment uh, the board on the, uh, the, the strategy this year of making the four campaigns. I think that it's, it's moving slowly, but I think it's, it's giving chapters something to bite on and what they can do and members of, of advocating these certain things. But it's a little disconcerting to see in the survey that say manners is like amongst the least concerns and and this gets to my broader point is you know the bridge between the sort of wider membership that maybe have social concerns and the technical um community which is something that you see locally you know, we say locally as a, as a chapter, we don't know our local IETF people. We don't have, we don't interface with them. We don't know our local organizational people. We don't really interface with them. In terms of the collaborative governance aspects and this kind of thing, how can we better interface these three constituencies at the local level? Thank you, Jolly. Um, yeah. Um, Anyone have any immediate feedback? Yeah, this is Gonzalo. Um, thanks, Jolie, for the question. Actually, um, interesting enough, we were discussing that same question within the board, like, you know, one or two weeks ago, which um, is that exactly as, as you said, you know, the campaigns or anything else we, we do, usually the connections in, in our communities, right, between, you know, IPF chapters and orgs, they are more based on, you know, personal relations as opposed to, to a structural. And, and we are thinking of how to structure that a bit better so that, you know, organically we can start building those connections. Um, we are thinking that coming up with, with common things where people could be involved and, and work on together, that would be a good start. Um, but if you have any suggestions, I mean, we would love to hear them because, as I said, we are starting thinking of that in order to define the action plan for, you know, next year, which, you know, we, we will start doing right after the summer with, with the new CEO as well. So in that sense, you know, it's, um, I mean, in summary, you know, great idea. We are thinking of it. If you have any, any good idea, just let us know. I'll, I will follow up and say something like the sort of chapter fund idea where there's a little bit of money to provide a multi-stakeholder local thing, at, you know, which is at every, uh, all over the place, which brings th together the constituencies. Okay. Excellent. But let, let's follow up on that. Thank you, Jolie. Okay, hey James, uh, go back to you. And uh, yes, a few more people in the queue. Uh, Bienvenue had a question earlier. Hello. Hi, Hello. everybody. Please go ahead. Yeah, I'm Bienvenue from Burundi. Uh, my question was to know if the ISOC was involved in the 2018 reform personal data protection rules? If yes, what is your plan for its 
awareness. And the second question is that the internet should be accessible to everyone, everyone, but currently it has become a profitable business. What is the ISOC approach on that issues? Or do you have some initiative to that problem? Because uh, nowadays, the internet is for rich people only, but those who are not uh, uh, the poor people or those who are in rural area, they do not have access on the internet. Since the internet has become a, uh, a, a, a tool for the development, so I would, not, I would like to know if the ISOC have some initiative to about that issue. Thank you very much. Thank you for your question and for your um, feedback. Is there any immediate um, responses? Um, please raise your hand. Um, maybe Desiree will lead again. Uh, I'd like to really thank uh, the uh, gentleman for raising this because uh, access internet for everyone is what we are all standing for. And I'd like to note that there are some very positive examples like the Toshetti project in, in uh, Georgia, for example, where uh, remote, very distant parts of the country were connected with help from ISOC. So there are these small but growing examples that can be replicated elsewhere. This is in terms of access. But of course, the bigger picture of you know, the uh, um, expenses and affordability are internet governance uh, issues that need well I mean a multi-stakeholder approach and having ISOC as one of many different partners to work with so we are all engaged in this uh, particular uh, discussion and uh, we are hoping that of course change is difficult to achieve immediately but slow and steady we are in, in the right track. Hi Tessire may I add something? This is all Thank you. I, I, I think Walid mentioned this very important issue of the community networks. Of course, ISO cannot solve all the problem of connectivity of the whole world. But let me tell you that each chapter has uh, the possibility of organizing one event or two events with some funds you get every year. Um, and uh, we usually do that in Argentina, open to the full community. We try to do it with remote participation and has been extremely successful in bringing the different stakeholders together because the networking among stakeholders is fundamental to enhance the capacity building, the understanding and the links in between the different parties. So I, I suggest that you get in touch with, with your local chapter or start a new chapter if you don't have one in, in your country and try to profit from that. Thank you, Olga. Um, we can, thank you, Bienvenue. But, but um, please, I have the questions which was not yet responded about the if the ISOC was involved in the 2018 reform or personal data protection rules. Just I would like to know if you have some clarification on that. Thank you. Thank you. So the data protect, uh, personal protection rules, we are thinking about GDPR, which is a European uh, regulator. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, therefore um, we have, uh, we, as any other entity, have to comply with GDPR. Um, I'm, you know, this is a regulation that has been, uh, um, um, uh, that is a European regulation, but I, I don't believe that we had any particular um, involvement ourselves in making this regulation. I might be wrong, but I do not want to talk on behalf of the staff. We are really looking at um, some strategic visions rather than what has happened. Yeah. And the staff is on the call, I can see that you may wish to answer that. Uh, in but the, the, issue, the issue is that uh, many people nowadays, it looks like they, they are not awareness about that uh, rules and it looks like it's nonsense for the freedom of the internet. You, know? you would like more awareness from the Internet Society about the implementation of the general personal data protection rules. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I, Thank I you very much. 
Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you. So, Desiree, we still have some unanswered questions in the chat from uh, Bahe Romina and Carlos Vera, and uh, I see that uh, uh, Maha also has a question. Yes, um, we are getting to um, close to the end of our discussion, um, I think, and I, I see more questions uh, also in the in the chat room. Um, so, as I said initially, we would be able to follow up with these questions in a, in a in a written format uh, back uh, to the community and uh, and try to answer some of the questions that are unanswered. Uh, we are two minutes past the hour, uh, so we can stay three minutes more if uh, others uh, would like to do so to hear uh, two more questions. Thanks, James. Would you like to read them? Sure, I can do. So, uh, Drashti had a, a short question about how the Internet Society helps to ensure diversity and inclusion. Um, and then we had uh, a question from Bahe. Uh, about um, understanding that the internet is not only about WhatsApp but for everything because we are facing this problem. Uh, so how do we uh, create a better perception of what the internet really involves? Um, and then Romina had a question, if new technologies can reduce corruption and improve the governance of the internet. Thank you. You are muted, uh, Desiree. Yes. I said uh, in a best effort to keep our um, time, um, I would just ask if anyone would like to pick one of these three questions because the, the questions in the chat room are, um, um, are still coming through. What is the chief um, ethics officer of ISOC and, and so on. So if anyone wishes to answer any of Romina's or previous um, questions, um, please go ahead and then we will try to adjourn uh, the meeting. Um, yes, it's me again, uh, Desiree. I mean, uh, Walid, uh, I'd, I'd like just to focus on the fact that internet is a conduit it, it can be almost anything that can be done on the internet can be done i mean and real life can more or less be done on the internet so it's a reflection of us as a society so issues regarding awareness education etc will have to find a way to have a place on the internet that being said the isoc will work on it as its mandate on aspects of access and standards and ensuring the reliability and security of the internet and that is something that uh, is in our DNA, and it can only be done with support from the community and, and of course, with uh, resourceful and competent staff. Uh, that being said, there are various challenges that's been raised, including, for example, consolidation, which are overarching issues that strategically ISOC is now going to focus on. And hopefully with the new CEO, that would be one of the main areas. And also there will be need for more engagement of this sort with the board except that we need to also focus on the need, on the vision and strategic aspects of what can also promote and anything else about operational aspects about functions about issues with chapters can also always be addressed with the staff directly but so i think this is towards the end of the event yeah. so thank you all for this uh, thank you, Willit. I, I believe we have uh, hadn't had a chance to yet go through the question number uh, uh, five to see what would be, uh, you know, the best way to benefit from the network of chapters. But we've, um, uh, I'd just like to thank everyone um, who has joined uh, this um, consultative process and to thank you for your time and for your questions and for your feedback. And uh, we will uh, um, summarize uh, this call and uh, try to answer uh, some of the questions we couldn't in this uh, short time. So thank you all again. Thank you. Thanks to staff, James, and everyone else who made it happen and who joined uh, this call. Uh, see you online. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank Bye -bye. you, everyone.